I want to share with you some very important and easy cybersecurity tips to make sure you don't get hacked, to make sure your identity doesn't get stolen. My name, by the way, is Jason Hansen. I'm a former CI officer and I do a tremendous amount of consulting on helping people avoid getting hacked, protecting their identity and whatnot. Um, also, you might have seen me on Shark Tank or Fox News. So let's get down to business. Please welcome back former CIA officer Jason Hansen. Former CIA Jason Hansen. This handsome fella is Jason Hansen. Okay. This is Jason Hansen, former CIA guy. How can you protect your identity? How can you make sure hackers aren't getting you in the very crazy and uh, you know cyber attack filled world we live in? First, let me tell you a very quick story. So as I said, I'm former CIA. I used to have my top secret security clearance. And you may or may not remember, several years ago, the US government got hacked and millions, I think it was 22 million, I think was the exact number, but 22 million um, inf uh, people's information with security clearances got stolen by our adversaries. So went to Russia, you know, went to China, Iran, and now there are several countries that we can't travel to anymore, um, whether it was our true name or our alias or any, all, a whole bunch of nonsense. So a friend of mine who is also former CIA, he gets a letter in the mail from OPM, the Office of Personal Management. And he says to me, hey, I just got this letter that said, hey, my top secret security information was one of the ones that got stolen. Did you get this letter? And I said, no, man, that sucks. You know, and uh, yeah, I didn't get the letter. Well, anyways, about two days later, I got the exact same letter that said, hey, Jason Hansen, congratulations. The United States government failed to protect your information and your top secret security information, all your background information, all your social, you know, your social security number, everything you use to fill out your uh, application to get your top secret security clearance, which is a mountain of paperwork, is now all in the hands of, uh, hands of a bunch of bad guys, so be careful. Now, when that happened, obviously it's not great. Obviously I didn't want it, but I wasn't super worried because there are many things I do to protect my identity. So I'm gonna tell you the very simple ones you wanna do. It's not hard, it's not rocket science. You don't have to be a cyber you know, tech guy or any of that. Number one, you wanna use a VPN, a virtual private network on your computer when you're serving the inter internet. So VPN, just go on the internet, search for, you know, uh, <clears throat> just Google VPN, you'll see what it is. Virtual private internet, you download on your computer, and the simplest way I can explain it is it basically uh, scrambles and encrypts your traffic. So I live in Utah, right? So if I'm in Utah right now and I already get on my computer, it might show that I'm in New York City. It might show that I'm, you know, I could put my VPN anywhere. You So you could put, I could be in Germany right now. So the VPN encrypts your data. That way, if you're surfing Wi-Fi, somebody basically can't read your email and hack your information. If you've ever been on an airplane and you get on the airplane Wi-Fi there, and you're not using a VPN, anybody on there could be hacking you. If there was a hacker, uh, there was some article, I believe it was in the Washington Post, where a journalist was on in the, uh, he was on the uh, plane Wi-Fi, all his information got hacked because he was not encrypting it. He wasn't using a virtual private network. I travel all the time for business. So I'm in a hotel, if I get on the hotel Wi-Fi, I'm certainly not just getting on the hotel Wi-Fi, which is open, and going about like logging into my bank account or you know using any passwords. I first enable my VPN, which is just a click of the button, then I can surf public Wi-Fi without fear of having my information stolen out getting without getting hacked. So VPNs are very expensive or very inexpensive. I almost said expensive, but they're very inexpensive. They only cost about $50 a year, and there's a bunch of them. Figure out what works for you. Um, the one I use is Proton Mail, but again, there's a million out there, so figure out whatever one you want to use. Uh, so number one, get a VPN, virtual private network. Number two, freeze your credit. This is so simple to do. We know there are three credit bureaus. There's TransUnion, there's Equifax, there's Experian. Well, if somebody wants to go, you know, take out a loan in your name or whatever, uh, get you know, buy a car, your credit gets checked. You want to freeze your credit. What does that mean? So that nobody can go buy a house or you know, take out a loan because when they try and check your credit, it'll say it's frozen. So let me tell you how this works. They give you a pin, 10 digit pin or whatever. And if you wanna unfreeze your credit, let's say you're buying a house, you just go online for one of these companies, TransUnion, whoever it might be, put in your pin number and say, hey, I wanna increase my fret credit, or excuse me, unfreeze my credit for the next five days, seven days, whatsoever. You can also do this over the phone. Um, I was very blessed to go on the television show Shark Tank. Shark Tank made you fill out a ton of paperwork. You know, they wanna run your background, know everything about you, make sure you're legit. And I'd forgotten to unfreeze my credit. So they called me and said, hey Jason, you know, we're trying to check your credit, your background, and we see you have a credit freeze. Oh, and I said, oh yeah. So I lifted it for three days. They ran my credit, make sure everything was legit, and then it goes back on. 
So it's very, very simple to do. Back in the day when I did it, you had to do everything via paper, meaning I had to mail in a letter and say, freeze my credit and do all this and that. Of course, these days you can do everything online. So please freeze your credit with all three credit bureaus. That way, if anybody tries to hack you, take out loans in your name and all that, it'll come back, hey, this person's credit frozen. Plus you'll be notified, hey, somebody's trying to you know, check your credit and buy a house in Timbuktu, Montana. So freeze your credit, do this. When I teach my seminars, and I mentioned this when I'm teaching some kind of cybersecurity seminar, I'll say, hey, please raise your hand how many people have credit freeze on all three credit bureaus. Only about 10% of people raise their hands. So do this now, very, very easy to do. So number one, virtual private uh, VPN, virtual private network. Number two, have a credit freeze. And number three, use common sense. What I mean by that is listen, when your Nigerian uncle emails you and says, click on this link to claim your $50 million, don't click on the link. When you see anything suspicious, don't click on it. So a lot of this is common sense. The first two will highly protect you from just you know random bizarre things, meaning sometimes they just may get lucky typing in a social security number or typing in a credit card number, whatever it might be. All that's great, the virtual private network, the freezing the credit, but you still have to have common sense because if you click on a link in an email, if it says, you know, Bank of America says, hey, you know, we need you to give us your social via email, obviously don't do that. Call them. Anytime I get anything, you know, suspicious looking email, don't call the number there because, of course, it could be a fake number. Go online, call the real Bank of America number, call the real Wells Fargo number, call the whatever legitimate number is. So people these days are so lazy and criminals know that, which is why they send out these email scams and it works all the time. But don't be lazy, please. Go online, find out the real number, call and see, okay, is this legit? You know, when you get that voicemail from the IRS that says they're gonna put you in jail for unpaid taxes, the IRS doesn't do that. They're not leaving you voicemails. They always send you a letter where they're threatening you with something. So anytime anything looks wrong, call, get on the phone with a person and do not trust the number in the emails. These are very, very simple tips. Anybody can do these. I've got a lot more coming your way when it comes to safety, survival, and spy tactics that you're gonna love. So please like, subscribe, turn on the ring notification bell. I'm former CIA officer Jason Hansen. Have a wonderful day.